Hey, everybody, I'm Angie Goff, and this is the Oh My Goff Show. For nearly two decades, I've covered big stories and big names, whether it was reporting from the royal wedding, the Super Bowl, or sitting down with the first lady. There's one thing I know for sure. Behind every headline is a human story, one filled with ups, downs, laughter, and life lessons. Each episode, we'll tap into some pretty incredible minds, people who've found true success in chasing their dream or changing the world. It's the story behind the story that I hope will inspire your own. This is the Oh My Golf Show with Angie Goff. Welcome to another edition of the Oh My Golf Show and OMG. Talk about the Jeff Bezos when it comes to to points and capitalizing and maximizing your points. I mean, this guy, he built an empire literally starting in his parents' home back in the 90s. We're going to get into that story. But anything that's involving loyalty programs, Sky Miles, travel, hacking into restaurants, hacking into luxury places, uh, pretty much scamming the system, but legally, this is your go-to source. He is the founder of The Points Guy. We're talking a place that 10 million people a month go to to get these insider tips and to use their tools. He has been described as a points magician. So without further ado, ta-da, we've got Brian Kelly with us. Thank you so much for having me. Andrew, I have to say on a scale of one to 10, how good are you with your points? Okay. 10 being like a whiz, you can book around the world trips. One being you let miles expire. Do you want to know the honest? Honest truth. We got to start off. I got to know what I'm working with here. I didn't know who you were. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to change your life, Angie. And this is how started. (laughs) So one of my BFFs, who's my co-anchor, I mean, just had her wedding in Menorca. This girl, I don't know how she's like traveling all over the place like crazy. She, we go to pay for food and I have a debit card. I'm like, I'll put on my debit card. She's like, you don't have a credit card? I'm like, no, I don't have a credit card. And everybody at the table was like, (gasps) no, like it was this collective gasp. And I was like, yeah, I have good credit, but I don't have a credit card. And they literally, she lost her mind. So then she sends me podcast after podcast of you. Like you're on the lady gang, you're on this, that. And she's like, listen to this one. And then I start listening to it. And then I, I tell my husband, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm losing so much money. Like this guy is brilliant. He's a genius. Look at this. This is what everybody else is doing out here. So that's how it started. And that's how I got hooked on you. And I I started listening to everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was just, it was like walking into TJ Maxx where I was just overwhelmed. It was (laughs) so much. I didn't know where to start. And so Marina, my friend, who I think is probably going to pop on here, she's at a hair appointment right now, but she was just like, just, she's like, DM him. He's so cool. You know, he writes people back and he would just be the greatest guest. And if you don't know this in your forties, three kids, like other people don't know this information. So to long story short, that wasn't really a short answer, but uh, that's how good I am with my point system. Well, good. Well, today you're going to learn a lot and I'm, I'm uh, happy to, you know, take questions. I don't know how you want to do it, but, uh, you know, yeah. my goal in life now at the points guy. So I started it in 2010. I sold the business years ago. I'm still on, but now I'm just like our chief spokesperson. I do media pretty much every day working on my own TV show. Like my goal is to get as many as people possible converted because there is truly no downside. Everyone around the world, but especially in America, it is so easy to get points, not just from credit cards. There's all sorts of easy free ways to get points. And The bottom line, if there's one thing you learned today, it's that points are a currency. And the more you accrue points, the better life you live, period. And if you're using cash or debit cards, you are throwing money in the trash can. Not only that, your credit, actually, as you get into the points game and you get a credit card, the more available credit you have and you pay it off in full every month, your score goes up. So not only you get points, but you get a higher credit score, which gets you lower mortgage rates. So paying attention to this what seems like a niche little world, um, not just is great for vacations and being able to splurge, but I really do think it makes people live smarter across the board. So happy to yeah. be here today. It was like a game too. I mean, it, like puzzle pieces. Uh, and we're going to get into each of those things that you said. And by the way, firesiders that are joining us, April, Pilar, Bruce, Walter, these are this is like our intimate crew, and they can actually at any point request to ask any questions. So he says something, something pops up. There's no dumb questions. I'm going to ask all the dumb questions, obviously. So, uh, so don't worry. Uh, but but 
in a day and age where everybody thinks that they're an expert in everything, social media influencing and all that has gone just crazy, right? I mean, I can't tell you how many people I see, oh, travel expert, travel expert. And they say the same damn thing every time. I'll pack your patience. It's not going to get any better. I'm like, give me something I can use. Okay. I want some, some actionable stuff. So, but, but with your story, I just love, you really are an expert. Um, and just to take us back to your humble beginnings back in the nineties, I love that you're like a nineties kid and how this really started and how you, you grew into this expertise and became the notorious TBG. Yeah, so I, it was the 90s, so I'm 39 years old. So the year was like 1991 when I got my first PC. I was just obsessed with computing. I taught myself DOS. I mean, I was in the AOL and Prodigy internet days when you had to install a modem, sc screech to life. And and I kind of became my family's like computer whiz. And my dad ended up getting a job uh, with a startup where he had to work from home. And he literally didn't know how to use a computer. He hates when I say that, but it was kind of true. And he had to book his own travel. And it was, the year was like 1995 at this point and Travelocity had just launched and it was so easy to use. So he, my first job was him paying me $10 per flight that I had to book. He thought it took me like an hour to do. It took me like 60 seconds. So it was actually a really good gig for what, a 13, 12, 13 year old, yeah, 12 year old at that point. Um, and one day he said, I have all these frequent flyer miles and if you can figure out how to use them, we'll go on a free trip. And I'm one of four kids. Uh, we grew up, you know, middle-class family in the Philly suburbs. Almost everyone, if you grow up in Philly, you go to the Jersey Shore. That's like the go-to vacation spot. And that was cool, but I always had like higher, my parents joke, they're like, where did you come from? Because I've always wanted to live a fabulous life on, you know, the, the champagne lifestyle on a beer budget. And long story short, I figured out how to use my dad's US Airways miles and American miles and all six of us, I've got three siblings, we went to the Cayman Islands for free in 1996, and it was unbelievable. I, I nearly had a panic attack. You know, I was 12 years old planning an international trip. We had never traveled internationally. Uh, I rented a house on VRBO, which had just launched, um, and we had the time of our lives, and it was literally cheaper to go to the Caribbean than it was to go down the Jersey Shore. So that was kind of like the bonding. My dad traveled a lot for work. He would miss basketball games, and it would kind of be hard that he was a road warrior, but every year it was our bonding. So I call him the original points guy. Um, and we would plan trips to Barbados and other islands across the Caribbean. Um, so that's really where I like learned how to use points. And, and back then there were no websites, but the biggest tip I learned, and it's still good today, is be nice to airline representatives. I know you're frustrated. I know they can be curt because they deal with jerks all day long, but I promise you, if you are extra nice to phone agents at the airlines, even in 2022, they have immense power. They can make exceptions. They can move mountains. And by being nice in person, you're going to get a lot further. Don't give in to your stress and scream at them because you're just doing yourself a disservice and just being a mean person. So that's also one of my favorite tips in general. It should go for everything in life, whether you're at a restaurant or a hospital, but especially in travel. Yeah. And, and you... You've been doing that since, God, I mean, since you were a kid, you've been talking to these airline representatives. You guys are probably on a first name basis, I assume. Uh, but what I will say is uh, you actually, you, you don't graduate from from college and say, I'm going to be the points guy. You went and took a real job. Yeah, so actually, so my points uh, beginnings began. So I went to University of Pittsburgh and I became student body president. And in the same year, I started going to student government conferences all across the U.S., I started traveling um, and I was flying back. I grew up outside of Philly and Southwest Airlines had just launched and it was $50 to fly back and forth from Pittsburgh to Philly. Um, so all of a sudden I was accruing points. I studied abroad in Madrid, went to cheap flight to Ireland on spring break. So one day in like 2003, I became US Airways gold status. And just from all my cheap tickets, all of a sudden I'm getting upgraded to first class. And that's when I found, I was, I think I was, it wasn't Google wasn't even around then. I think it was Dogpile was my search engine. And I found Flyer Talk, which was this holy grail. Unbeknownst to me, there was a whole network of people all around the world that were obsessed with points. And it was a rabbit hole. It's kind of like finding Reddit and just going down a rabbit hole or YouTube video thread where three hours later, you're like, why am I here watching videos of, you know, how airplanes are made or whatever you love? 
that's what flyer talk was for me and i immediately connected it took months to get the lingo there was this big community but i was hooked and the generosity of the frequent flyer community was amazing people knew i was in college they would give me free flights their expiring upgrade certificates so all of a sudden i realized like it's like alien life out there i'm not alone in doing this little hobby so i then became super hooked on points um but i graduated in 05 moved to new york city at age 22, I worked for Lord & Taylor as a buyer. That was the job I could get to move to New York. So I kind of put travel on pause. I wasn't making a lot of money, but I wanted to do that New York City, you know, uh, lifestyle. <laughs> and, um, but it was in, in 2007, I got a job at Morgan Stanley where I started traveling all across the United States and Canada doing all their college recruiting. And I realized I could put every expense on my corporate Amex. And all you had to do was call up Amex and say, I'll pay the $95 fee and the points were yours. So that was like the aha moment. Like, oh my gosh, I'm putting $30,000 career fairs at Harvard on my Amex. So cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And all of my colleagues at Morgan Stanley, you know, the, the uh, expense process back in the day, you used to have to tape down receipts, fax it in. It was really annoying. But for me, I'm like, okay, so 10 minutes of my time to do one sheet of expenses is a free flight to Europe. Like, who wouldn't do that, you know? But I became the hero in HR because everyone was like, Brian's so nice. He'll always do the expenses. But I was raking in millions of points. You know, the recession hit in 08, 09, and there were no bonuses. There were no raises. But I was banking. I, one year I spent... I earned so many points, I got $80,000 worth of travel, which was more than my base salary. Um, so points for me, I was cash poor, but points rich. And it was eventually in 2010 that my friends were like, okay, you have to start a blog because Flyer Talk was still around, but it was so wonky and nuanced, the average person was never gonna. So I started the points guy to kind of take my knowledge and just share it with people. And it just blew up. Yeah. And then you sold it in like a year, right? It was such a wild time, Angie. I mean, I started blogging June of 2010. Never, No intentions of monetizing it. Actually, the original uh, revenue model was I would actually, I was a travel agent for points. So people would pay me $50 a ticket. And I would tell you, you'd come to me and say, I've got 400,000 Amex. Uh, you know, my husband and I want to go to Paris. You know, these dates, can you do it? So I would use all my tips and tricks and my institutional knowledge in my head so that was my side hustle. You know, I'd work at Morgan Stanley full time, come home and be this points travel agent. I started the blog as a way to get new customers to my booking service. But my life changed in early 2011. You know, I was blogging about credit cards and a friend from college who worked for an affiliate marketing company said, oh my God, Brian, you're doing it all wrong. Uh, I'm gonna get you in and you're gonna be a Chase Bank affiliate. Uh, you always write about their credit cards and now they'll pay you. Don't have to change anything. Just keep writing what you're writing. Instead of linking to chase.com, use one of your links where you get credit. And if someone gets approved, you get, you know, I think it was $150 per approval. And at the time I had 50,000 monthly readers who were very engaged. And I'm like, wait a minute, I don't need to convert a whole lot of credit cards to all of a sudden make this into a pretty decent business. And then Amex came on board. The site kept, I mean, it was doubling month over month. It was Probably, it was the craziest year of my life going from this blog that I know making a couple hundred bucks a month as a fun side hustle to truly it was like six figures a month with within a year. So quit quit Morgan Stanley, just kept blowing up. And then in 2012, uh, you know, a company called Bankrate knocked at my door and they were a publicly traded company that wanted to buy my little old blog. And it was like <laughs> life changing. I just remember being like, what is happening? Um, and but. I sold it in 2012, but here I am over a decade later, I'm still uh, highly involved with the company. About two years ago, I stopped running the day-to-day -day so I could focus on uh, doing what I love most, which is speaking to consumers uh, and you know, kind of strategizing with the brand and bringing more people into the game, not so much the day-to-day -day management of now what's over 130 employees. Wow, that is such an incredible story. It's been a, been a wild ride. Like the sound effects here on Fireside. I love it. <laughs> yeah, you don't get that on the Zoom or Skype, okay? <laughs> no, this is pretty cool. Uh, so we have Bruce here, uh, who's one of our viewers and our listeners, and he he has a question. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Hey. 
Right. Really great to meet you. Uh, actually, more of just a couple of comments because it's just like you're channeling my thoughts. First of all, uh, ex-Prodigy uh, employee. Oh, wow. Uh, Full circle things. moment. <laughs> Been in IT for some almost 40 years. But uh, one, with the being nice to um, uh, ticket takers at the uh, airline and, and checking in. British Airways taking my family to Europe in 2012. I had economy seats we're back there like lemmings and was nice uh, upon check-in to the ticketing agent. And she says, how's your mother there? And I said, well, she's really not doing too well, which was a total lie. And she, let me see what I could do. She upgraded all four of us to first class. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And what I'd say to people too, that, that used to happen to me. They, they have to, a lot of times they oversell economy if, and business doesn't sell. They need to bump people up anyway. So if you make that personal connection, they like you, you know, your mom probably reminded her of her mom. I mean, this is still travel, still a very human business. You know, the technology, it's really about human elements. And I'm six foot seven. So I would always go up to the ticket counter and smile and say, I, I just want to make your life easy. If you have to upgrade someone, you know, I would love it. Um, you know, and if there's anything I can do to make your life easier, let me know. Or I'll take a bump if you really need it too to help you out. And gate agents are like, oh, wow, someone who's actually trying to like, you know, of course, he's scheming for an upgrade. And she snickered at that. But she saw I was six, seven. And she's like, hey, if I'm going to random random Joe or, you know, this smart Alec who made me giggle, you know, people are humans have human impact. So that's a it's a great, great point you made. Absolutely. And second was uh, I've had this Bonvoy card since before it was Bonvoy. Uh, essentially what happened and it to Angie's earlier point I don't use my ATM card for anything I got skimmed once and as a result got this card I never checked the points uh, it was my 20th wedding anniversary coming up and one of my coworkers said you know that uh, card you use for international travel uh, I work for an international software company uh, I had taken dozens and dozens of flights to France and Italy and Spain and uh, the UK and never checked points well 20th anniversary I want to take the wife to Maui I call Marriott and they say, you've got eight free days anywhere in the world. I said, the Wailea Resort in Maui? And they said, absolutely. Amazing. Mind blown. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> and just a reminder to anyone with Marriott points, they give the fifth night free when you use awards. So sometimes, uh, it, like in your case, if you wanted to do get up to 10 nights, you just need one more night and you could get 10 nights for free. You know, and you could transfer in Amex points or Chase points to Marriott, but... Uh, but yeah, just a reminder, always check the balances of all your points. Yes. And I, I will just plug, you know, it can be confusing to log into a million different accounts, but at the Points Guy, we have a free app in the Apple App Store coming to Android next month. But um, it's the only app that'll track all your points balances from airlines, credit cards, and it gives you your net worth in points based on our valuations. And I've people log in, it takes a little bit to log your accounts in, but we check, we make sure your points aren't gonna expire. And I think it's really important for people to realize there's real value laying around in your points. And I think, um, you know, having them organized, uh, I think helps people realize that. And in your case, like going to Hawaii for free, I mean, come on, you're, you're beating the airlines, you're beating the credit card companies, two of the most hated industries, customer service wise in the world. There's no better game than the points game, in my opinion. Yeah. Thank Bruce, you so you're going to find out you're worth a lot more than, than Google says you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. <laughs> this is my problem. We have a couple other people who want to chime in with some questions, but the problem is self-control. I, I, so I turned to my friend, I go, so you buy all this stuff on your credit card, you pay for your dinners and this and stuff, and then you just pay it off at the end of the month. And the problem is I will, I will go shopping. I'll buy everything. And and then just kind of deal with it later. So so what advice yeah. would you have for someone who has that mentality? And more importantly, is there a way for me to still be able to change? Yeah, you bring up a good point. Honestly, if you're if you are if you're gonna have new credit and be tempted to spend outside of your means and get yourself into debt, then I I truly don't recommend the points credit card game for a couple reasons. The points credit cards generally have higher uh, interest rates. So even if you're earning points, but if you're paying 20% interest, you're negating all the value of those points and then a lot more. So for people who truly love to just, you know, spend, uh, 
you know, on a debit card, know the cash that they have, um, then, then don't, you know, there's nothing worse than getting into credit card debt. And there's no, even the points that you get are not going to be worth it. Also, if you're in credit card debt today, um, you know, earning points can still, you know, allow you to take trips, but I would recommend get, you know, transferring balances, getting the 0% APR, neutralizing your debt and getting out of debt. That's the most important thing because credit card debt, you know, we all know it's quicksand um, and you cannot win at the points game if you're going to run balances. It's, it's just that simple. But I mean, there are plenty of tools out there. You know, it's all about discipline. Angie, I believe you can do it. Uh, the thing is just spend on what you absolutely need and just pay those bills off. You don't even have to wait till the end of the month. You know, use your bank account, pull the money out every other day if you need to and pay your cards off. Uh, so that you don't all of a sudden run up these these huge bills. You know, there's lots that, of you know financial planning tools, et cetera. But um, but yeah, I was just under the understanding that every time you open up a credit card or something, that that works against your credit. But yeah. it it that's partly true, but mostly not. You know, FICO is the only credit score that you really need to worry about. That's what most major lenders use when they determine your credit worthiness. So if you have a lot of new inquiries, if you start opening up cards left and right, that could trigger some red flags like, hey, is this because what happens is people who are about to go bankrupt will apply for as much new credit as possible because, hey, I'm going bankrupt anyway, might as well run up a couple more. Right. So the banks have things in place to trigger that. Now, if you pay your bills off in full every month, there will be a two to five point temporary ding when you apply for a new credit card. However, the two largest factors of a FICO score are paying your bills on time and your debt to credit ratio. So what this means is the more credit cards you have, the more available credit you have available to you. But as long as you pay it off in full every month, your ratio uh, will be low. And that's what they look for. They actually look for people who have a lot of credit available and don't run huge balances. Your score will shoot up because of that. So paying on time, and paying off your bills in full, that two to five point ding, which on an 850 point credit score is nominal to begin with, that your score will actually go up. Almost, I've never met someone who played the points game, got a credit card here or there, paid it in full, and said their credit still went down. There are some nuances, you know, once in a while, you know, the credit card companies will close uh, the bill cycle before you're able to pay. So temporarily, it will look like you're running big balances. So when you're applying for a mortgage, I recommend that everyone pay your bills off before the due dates, just so you get, whenever they do run your credit, it's showing zero balances across the board. But in general, as long as you pay your bills in full every month, your credit score will go up. How many cards do you have? I have 25 credit cards, which sounds kind of crazy. Oh. A near perfect credit score. One of the perks of the points guy is they reimburse my credit card fees, even my Amex Centurion fee. Uh, which is a nice perk of the job, but hey, I need to I need to know about the products that I preach. So I don't okay. recommend everyone getting twenty five cards. Like, how many do I need to get for to start off? Look, here's the deal. I mean, first thing, when getting a new credit card, anyone listening, look at what you spend the most money on. So whether that's dining, you know, uh, Amex, we need DoorDash and Amazon by yeah, costume. So Amazon. like an Amex Gold is a no brainer card. That's probably the best points card in the Amex side of the house. You get. Uber credits, which can be used towards Uber Eats and dining. Um, for people who pay rent, there's a new credit card called Built, B-I-L-T. It's no fee, no annual fees, and you can pay up to five fifty thousand dollars a year in rent and earn points with no fees. They'll even send a check to your landlord if your landlord doesn't take electronic payments. It's an, an absolute no-brainer. Those Built points are among the most valuable out there. You can use them on airlines, American United or even use them to pay rent or to save up for a down payment on a mortgage, which is a unique card. So anyone paying rent should have the built credit card. Um, so basically I say, so choose a credit card that pays, that rewards you on a sign up bonus and that gives you bonuses in the categories you spend on the most every month, whether that's rent, whether that's dining, groceries, uh, gas. You know, if you have a small business, get a small business credit card. The Amex Business Gold will actually give you bonuses automatically on what you spend the most on. So, um, you know, it's it, there's a lot of different things that go into it. And at the Points Guy, we've got guides, best card guides for newbies. Um, and in general, you know, the airline and hotel credit cards um, are like Bruce had are good for perks. You can get free nights. 
and upgrades. But in general, I recommend people getting transferable points credit cards. So this is the Amex, you know, uh, the gold, the platinum, Chase Sapphire, uh, preferred and reserve are great. Capital One Venture and Venture X. Those programs allow and built rewards. They allow you to earn points and then transfer to a number of different partners. So that's where you get the maximum flexibility. If you've just got a Delta Sky Miles Amex, you only have Delta Miles. If you want to stay at a Park Hyatt in Paris, you can't use those Delta Miles. You can't transfer. So whereas if you had Chase points, you could transfer your points to Hyatt and book that expensive stay, or you could transfer to Emirates or Air France. You have lots and lots and lots of different options. That's a Chase Sapphire. Chase okay. Sapphire Preferred and Amex Gold for beginners are just too, you cannot go wrong. They've got big signup bonuses. They give bonuses in the categories we all spend the most in, and also that built card for anyone paying rent. Oh my gosh, I'm taking copious notes here. I'm ready to start out applying. But I will just say, wait, one other thing. When you apply, there's usually a minimum spend requirement. So usually 3000 within the first three months. That's, you know, so just make sure you don't bite off more than you can chew. I recommend if you're new to the credit card game, get one new credit card, make sure you hit the sign up bonus. And the annual fee does not include in that sign up. You know, if you have to spend 3000 some people will think, oh, the $400 fee, it doesn't include. And also that clock generally starts ticking the day you're approved not necessarily when you start using the card. So those are small nuances. If you don't hit that spend within the, the right amount of time, you don't get the sign up points. And that hurts my soul when I hear people saying, oh, I misjudged it by a day and I missed that thousand dollar bonus. It's like, so um, okay, yeah, always make sure you come in ahead of, you know, if you're at the three month mark, try to hit that spend at least a couple weeks before. That's the really valuable information. Um, April, what's your question? Okay, first of all, thank you for letting me know about the bill because I have a college student, so now he can get out of my house. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> well, April, it's fun. It's fun. And on the note of college students, so by the way, congratulations. But I really, parents out there, start your kids with credit in college. You know, even a, a Discover College card, teach them, you know, monitor it, make sure they don't overspend. I actually made those dumb mistakes in college. But you start a college student at 18 with their own credit. They, you know, put their books, you make sure they pay it off. When they graduate, they're not going to need you to co-sign for an apartment. They'll have a solid score. It's, you know, credit, it's not rocket science. It's a matter of length and showing that you pay on time and pay those bills off. So, and um, yeah. Okay. So I do have a question and thank you for that again. Um, and I appreciate that you are 39 and not 25 telling me how to run my credit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so I have a 11 year old and now he's into these apps where you were talking about saving money. He's now into this Fletch app. So he's now he's a sixth grader and he's now running around the house trying to find a way to save money by scanning all the receipts. How reliable are those apps when really trying to save money? You know, I think in general, I, I love hearing this because your son is learning the value of money early on. Um, I don't know the Fletch app specifically. I would always approach apps um, with a level of uh, what data you're giving them. You know, a lot of times, you know, simple weather apps on our phone. Oh, but they're also listening and selling our data, right? Like if something's free, you got to look, you know, behind it. And I'll be completely transparent the points guy app is free we do not sell data to any partners we've got a pretty strict privacy policy you know but also you don't need to attach your accounts to use the app but to get the tools like how many points you have you obviously have to share that information but we don't sell that information or use it for for anyone but um, a lot of apps do so i would just you know always look through i know it's not sexy to look at privacy policies or google around like what's the catch with the fletch app right because i'm sure someone else probably has that but you know learning that there are a lot of deals out there there's so many ways to save money online purchases one thing i'll add you know especially back to school even though most kids are probably in school by today um, to earn frequent flyer miles or cash back never shop online directly at a retailer's website never never mm -hmm. never Everyone promise me, always go through. Um, there are airline and uh, credit card shopping portals and cash back where you put in, in the case of airlines, today I actually had to get a suit at Neiman Marcus. I went online 
And uh, Adva- American Airlines has a shopping mall where you put in your frequent flyer number. It puts a cookie on your computer, and then I earned five American Airlines miles per dollar spent. Now that was in addition, and that's separate. You could use a debit card and still earn five miles. Uh, but then I also earn miles for using my my credit card as well. So we call that double dipping. So uh, you know, at the points guy in our guide section, we've got a beginner's guide that teaches people all of these things. But when you go directly to a retailer's website, you're foregoing all those free frequent flyer miles. Or at a very minimum, even if you don't want miles, shop cash back portals. You can earn real cash back shopping online. Um, you know, and there are always those the tabs like Honey that help um, get discounts. I mean, these these can really add up. So uh, I, I'm proud of your son for taking that. And I, I think it's important to start thinking about generational wealth at early ages and that it's not, not just on the parents' job to build up a nest egg for their kids, but hey, you can join in on this too. And if you, I think in the points world, I, it's a big game and people love games. Kids love games. So getting their mind like, hey, you know, and there's there's points all around us. There's coupons all around us. And hey, if, if you want to hustle to get it, I'll share in those savings with you. And um, so I, I love everything he's doing. Thank you. I'll let him know that you said that too. <laughs> uh, he's a future. I feel like he's a future intern for the points guy. Yes, <laughs> I got April. you. Thank you. Thank you. It's funny because I did a, I, I did get a credit card in college. I, I got it at the Johnson Center over at George Mason University here. Uh, just so that we could go on a booze cruise to the Bahamas and we maxed that puppy out. I mean, my- oh, I did the same thing, Angie. I was so dumb in college. I had a Verizon bill when I graduated. I was like, they'll never know I'm moving from Pittsburgh to New York City. They could never find, you know. So I had bad credit for a while. So that's why actually I feel like I've been there and I know that it's hard work, but you got to pull your head out of the sand and there is a pathway out. And it might be temporary pain of, limiting travel and all those nice things we like, but getting debt free is the best feeling in the world. Not necessarily debt free, but credit card debt free, which is especially tricky. And also viewing these points, like you said, truly as like another Bitcoin, a type of currency, yeah. you know, your own personal crypto that's actually more reliable than, than the actual stuff itself. And you talk a lot about travel, obviously. Uh, is there, I, I know you mentioned the Amex Gold, you mentioned the Chase Sapphire, but is there one good travel card for people that that's what their goal is, is to just go to great places and to go to them on a budget or to do it the cheapest way possible? Yeah. So, I mean, those credit cards, in my opinion, are the all around best cards. So Capital One Venture, Chase Sapphire, Amex Gold. The Amex Platinum is great if you like lounge access and the Centurion lounges. If that doesn't you know, matter to you. I wouldn't recommend spending the money on that card. Um, the built credit card is also very good. That also gives uh, on dining and travel, 3X and 2X respectively. Um, those are like the core cards. There are airline cards and, and business credit cards that can also add up. But uh, I'd say getting cheap travel is more of a mindset too. You got to learn how to hunt for cheap flights. And everyone I know who's an expert, you got to learn how to use Google flights. So google.com slash flights. This is the kind of experts guide. Um, you can search by month, you can pull in certain airlines. Um, you, and really being flexible is how you find the cheapest fares. You can also they have an explore feature. And this is what I tell people, look, if you're if you want to go to Miami, and the flights are $800, and it's just ridiculous, you could go to Europe for that. If you want a beach, You can put in your home airport, say it is DC. You can go on Google Flights, hit the explore map, give it the date you want to go somewhere, say your kid's spring break, and it'll show you where all the cheap fares are. So instead of Miami, you may be able to go to St. Augustine for half the price, you know? And and I think travel's all about, you know, we all like our, you know, what we know, but travel's also about pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. So reverse engineer your trips around where the deals are. You know, Cairo, oh, well, I never thought to go to Cairo, but it's $400 round trip, right? I mean, and once you get there, the great thing right now is the US dollar is so strong. It's stronger than the Euro, which is the first time in 20 years that's happened. So, you know, uh, taking international trips to places where the US dollar is really strong, South Africa, um, I mean, really, most countries, U.S. dollars got major bang for your buck. You will be shocked. I mean, South Africa, you go to a five-star dinner for two with wine 
you know, 60 bucks and you get an amazing meal. Like it's same, you know, Colombia, a lot of places in Central America. So uh, there is huge value to be had. So understanding the value of the dollar and learning how to shop for those cheap flights. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott's Cheap Flights is a great service. It's a subscription. They'll shoot you. Show, they search constantly for really cheap fares. The flight deal on Instagram and, and also Airfare Watchdog. There are Twitter accounts you can follow. And my number one tip, though, is when you see something you love, you got to book it immediately. And most airlines give 24 hours to cancel free of charge. So tell your friends, hey, I'll book it, book it now. And then, you know, take off, talk to your boss. And, but don't wait to take off to book the deal because so many of the hottest deals they go like that. You got all these people trying to get it into this conversation. Pilar, we'll start with you. You are a busy mama. Thank you so much. As always, Angie, such an informative show and uh, really great information that we can put to practice. So my question is five things that we need to do now to build our points arsenal. So the first thing you need to do, everyone needs to look at what you spend your money on, right? Look at the biggest categories where you're spending money month over month, and then you want to match that and make sure that you're spending on the right credit cards. So in the Point Sky app, we actually have, when you attach what you spend, we'll actually do an analysis and say, hey, if you were actually using this credit card, you'd be getting a ton more points. So you want to be able to get credit cards that reward you. I mean, maybe I'll even take a step back from that is sign up for every program, every airline that you fly. Um, you know, even if you don't think you're gonna fly that airline again, chances are they have partners where you can bank points. Next week, United and Emirates, for example, are inking a partnership where if you fly Emirates, which some people might do once a year, or once in a blue moon for a honeymoon, you can now bank that to, to other partners like Alaska Airlines. So always look when you're flying an airline, um, you may actually want to bank your JetBlue to American Airlines because that's where you have more points and the points will be more valuable. So understanding, you know, applying for new program, you know, any program that you should, you might as well have an account, uh, understanding where you spend your money, shopping online, understanding the concept behind shopping portals. It, you know, even today I can only give so much, but anyone can Google like, online point shopping portals. There's so many blog posts out there that will run you through the basics of it and how to, and there's a website, evechovictorreward.com. You can type in a retailer and it'll actually show you the cash back and the mileage rates at all the different portals. So if you need to shop at Target, it'll show you where you can get the most cash back or the most points. Um, I would also say the big thing is, okay, points are amazing, but perks are where it's at these days. So people don't realize when the airlines cancel your flights, delayed, you need to get a hotel, the airlines don't owe you anything but a refund. There's unfortunately no consumer protections. However, a lot of travel credit cards, all the ones I've mentioned today, have what's called flight interruption and delay coverage. Meaning if your flight's delayed over four hours or you have to spend the night, they'll reimburse you for so many fees up to $1,000 a ticket. So I want people to know there and beyond those protections, a lot of credit cards have purchase protection. If you drop your iPhone, you know, we all have to pay for a cracked screen. Credit cards will cover that for free. You know, American Express has purchase protection. I lost a Montclair jacket while traveling. They took the two thousand dollars immediately off my bill. So points are one side of the equation, but perks. I want everyone to look at the credit cards that they have and what perks come with it. And luckily, you know, if any major credit card, you can Google, you know, benefits of the Capital One Venture. And, you know, there are bloggers, we've, you know, there's so many sites that have broken down these perks and they can really save the day. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I would just say, like Google's your friend. This sounds so confusing. At the Point Sky, we've got 40,000 posts from the last 12 years. It can be overwhelming, but chances are if you have a question, like what is the best credit card for gas? Google it. Like, and always double check a couple different sites. Sometimes there are different credit cards, you know, that haven't been updated. But, you know, if you're spending a lot uh, in certain categories, just do a little bit of research. Even when you want to apply for a credit card, like what is the best sign up bonus for the Chase Sapphire Preferred? Like right now it's 60,000, but over the years, once a year, it's usually 80, right? So you might want to wait on a Sapphire and get, you know, but like you can Google so much. Uh, there's so much, so many communities of people sharing information. So 
familiarize yourself with all the online resources because there are so many of them. Obviously, I love the Point Sky, but there are sites like One Mile at a Time, View from the Wing. You know, on Reddit, there's a churning forum. So even if you've had a credit card and want to get the bonus again, you know, there's all these wonky rules. The Reddit churning forum is a wild, wild west of information. So can be exhausting, but like I guarantee any of you listening, once you start playing the game, it's so addictive and literally your life gets better. Um, what if you don't, um, aren't traveling as much and would like a good homey credit card to do yeah. your grocery shopping, gas, What what is a... Yeah. I get a mama's credit card with for all the expenses yeah. that parents kind of. And by the way, I'm about I'm uh, about to have my first. I'm having a baby boy in the next month, so I'm joining the parents club. So I think my travel and my credit card spending. I'm very excited about that. Um, but as far as cash back. You should get a cashback credit card and you should be getting at least 2% back on everything that you spend. The city double cash is kind of the gold standard. It's 2% back when you pay your bill in full every month. Plus that has a sign up bonus now uh, of $200 free just for getting it. No annual fee. Um, is that better than the Discover? I know. I mean, I've used Discover. So the thing with Discover is a lot of times it's one and a half percent or they'll have rotating categories with limits yeah. each quarter. So it, you know, it may seem great. You know, the Chase... The Chase Freedom Flex is another solid card um, and those points. Those The thing about Chase points is they're cash back, the Freedom points. But if down the line you're like, oh, wait, I do want to start traveling, what you can do is apply for a Chase Sapphire card. And what they'll allow you to do is take those cash back Freedom points and you upgrade them. You transfer them into your Sapphire. And then from there, you can transfer them to airlines or book hotels at a much higher value than the 1% cash back. So I really do like the Chase ecosystem start off with cash back on the freedom cards and then as you progress get the sapphire card and then you transfer to all sorts of cool partners and um for example when you travel with kids uh when you use freaking flyer miles though a lot of airlines will let you have your lap infant for free but then they'll charge you 10 percent of the cost of the ticket which could be hundreds or thousands of dollars but air canada aeroplan is amazing they don't charge fees for uh infants uh, or the fees are extremely, extremely low. And it sounds wonky, but Air Canada is a Star Alliance airline. So you can fly United, Lufthansa, Swiss, and that program is really generous. So, and you can transfer your Chase, Amex, City, Capital One, all to Air Canada, Aeroplan. So many families I know do it and save lots of money. Um, once again, one of the more intermediate topics, but learning about these transfer partners of all the major programs, that's where you get the most value. You can get five cents per point in value when you transfer to different airlines. Oh my gosh. So much, full-time job. <laughs> I know, right? You got all that? Don't worry, you can watch the replay uh, to follow up. Oh, I love it. Uh, Pilar, thank you so much. And uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, with the birth of your son, you should work out a deal with uh, Chase and you could like name him, you know, Chase Freedom Flex or something. <laughs> Chase is a good name. Come I actually, on. my my first my first dog ever, I named Miles, which people <laughs> didn't get. People would come up like six months later and be like, "Oh my god, the points guy, Miles, I get it." You you are the biggest one of the big. I thought that I work with meteorologists who are the biggest nerds in the world. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Past them, I'm kind of obsessed with your brain right now. Okay, so you get to meet the one who who introduced. The points guy to me. This is my co-anchor, Marina Morocco. Thank you, Marina. Thank you for showing Angie the light. Brian, I'm so happy that you're on. I can't believe all the notes that you've taken, Angie. I'm so proud of you. We'll see if she even gets started, but this is the first step. I don't even know if I have a question, Brian. Honestly, I'm totally fangirling. Angie knows I don't really care for like the famous people and all that, but your account, I live for your stories. My husband and I just did the um, Dubai dullest route on the a380 and i showed him your trip with pasta and i was like look at this he needs to fly. and i was like this is what we're doing he's like okay we can do 14 hours like that i'll do it and we did and it was amazing and thank you because that was like the one thing that i got him to go halfway across the world on 14 hour flight the problem the problem with emirates is once you start getting used to traveling on the emirates a380 you're like oh all other flights they're not as oh, fun as this you're Friend telling me yeah, the I'll onboard fly bar. to the end of the world if I have yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> he will now after that, he's like totally spoiled.
<laughs> but uh, I'm so happy you're on. I was telling Angie that to me, I think that one of like the great things of what you were talking about, you've definitely found a way to mainstream travel and it has seemed so hard to, to achieve for some people who are working, you know, paycheck to paycheck and they're trying to just go out and get on their vacation. What is like the one destination right now? And I can only equate it to like the old Thailand in the sense that like, it's super cheap once you're there. It can be extremely luxurious. What is that one destination in 2022, 2023 that you're like, okay, you have to go there. It may cost you a little to get there, but once you're there, it's pure luxury and you can do it for relatively low cost. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I, I mean, so many people still don't want to travel like super internationally, but they want to get a feel of getting away. I think Puerto Rico, there's so many flights there. The island is so much more even than just San Juan. You can do, you know, there's super luxury Dorado Beach. There are so many other little towns on the West Coast there, uh, Rincon and surfing, and you can have adventure, luxury. Like, I, I really do love Puerto Rico. You can do it so many different ways. Um, and it's so close and you don't even have to have a passport um, to go. So mm -hmm. that's like one, I mean, it's not a new destination necessarily. Yes. Um, I was just in Turks and Caicos this past weekend, which is my third time. Turks, you know, even from DC, it's Meet a three- Mrs. Turks and Caicos. You're talking to Mrs. Turks and Caicos. When I saw your stories, I was like, Wymera is like, you have to go to South Caicos and to Sail Rock. You will not regret it. It's amazing. And if you like the scuba, yes. you'll love it. Yeah, I mean, Turks and Caicos is amazing. I will say though too, in Europe, with the US dollar being so strong, um, Portugal, I'm actually a Portuguese resident. I did an investment uh, golden visa there. Portugal is so affordable. I mean, even when the US dollar was weak against the Euro, it was really affordable to travel. And you know, Portugal is the size of New Jersey. Porto in the north and the Douro wine valley is stunning. Um, food, people, culture, the south and surfing. Uh, and then the islands of Madeira and Azores. So Portugal is just still a really good value destination. There's tons of nonstop flights. In, you know, you can fly economy for $500 off into Portugal. It's, you know, five and a half, six hours on the flight from many places. So that's my European, you know, I'm actually gonna, I'm turning 40 in March and I think I'm gonna do a extravaganza in Portugal, so. That'll be incredible. Congratulations, by the way, on the baby. We're so Thank excited. You. I love watching all your stories. And yeah. before I so nice meeting you. Thank you, Brian. Likewise. Thank you, Nina. I'll see you um, at work. Is there anything that's on your list that this fall uh, would be great go-tos? Costa Rica doesn't get the hurricane season like the Caribbean does. And, you know, this fall, the rates are much cheaper. Once, you know, the holidays start hitting, it's a lot. So Playa Grande in Costa Rica is on the Pacific side. Amelia Island in Florida is stunningly beautiful. It's still really warm. Um, you know, as the holidays hit, it can get colder in Northern Florida, but that is definitely a beautiful destination. And then my personal, so I split my time. I live in um, New Hope, Pennsylvania, which is 90 minutes from New York, an hour north of Philadelphia. It's beautiful for fall leaves. It's on the Delaware River, uh, New Hope. And it's like such a cute uh, East Coast little getaway. I will also just end with like, when you travel and check a bag these days, you must get Apple AirTags because so many airports and airlines are losing bags. When you put AirTags in your luggage, you can always track exactly where it is. So when the airline loses your bag, you can say, no, no, it's exactly here. This is what it looks like. And please, can you go get it? Um, so that's yeah. like a tip when you're checking bags. And then also everyone get global entry, uh, which gets you TSA pre-check. There used to be really long waits to get global entry. Those have gotten much better now with online appointments. Um, but you know, security lines are really long and immigration lines. So uh, having global entry and clear, um, many airports now have clear where you can cut to the front of the line those have been lifesavers for me, especially as airports will continue to be crowded this busy holiday season. Yeah, no, I was coming back from covering the Royal Wedding, Harry and Meghan, and my poor photographer did not have global entry. And I was like, see ya. <laughs> Two and a half hours. Uh, but, but you're right about that. And, you know, we did see as we wrap pre-pandemic numbers this past Labor Day at the airports, it was great to see so many people traveling, but we also still saw more cancellations. We saw delays, we saw those long lines. So 
when do we expect that to get back to normal and do we and if you have any advice to, for people to keep their sanity yeah so yeah it's not you know unfortunately our travel system is stressed out there's a pilot shortage our air traffic control can't handle the, the amount of traffic it's antiquated, so whenever any storm hits, we have to limit the amount of landings, which then causes massive delays, and it's a snowball effect. It's not going to go away any anytime soon. I think the airlines are trying as hard as possible to staff up for this. You know, in the fall, things slow down a little bit, so hopefully they have the time now to hire those people they need. But um, I recommend using Flight Aware whenever you're tracking, you're flying, see where your flight's coming from. You've got to stay ahead of the game. You can't wait for the airline gate agent to tell you your flight's delayed, because guess what, honey? Like... You can actually learn 10, 20 minutes before the gate agent tells people by using FlightAware. And then that knowledge will let you go and online switch to a different flight, DM the airline, go to the lounge in the airport, get rebooked before anyone else knows. So it's about staying a step ahead of the game and not being reactive. As sad as it is, that's kind of the state of travel these days. So and not staying in those long lines either, right? I mean, don't wait. stand in the long line while, or while you're in line to be rebooked. Go get on the phone, call the international numbers for airlines because the wait times are usually much shorter. You know, Delta in Mexico City, you can Skype them, usually no wait. And instead of waiting three hours by calling the U.S. number. And they wow, yeah. And I've done the DM where I'll send the Twitter and, and they've gotten right yeah. back to me. So, oh my goodness, you are a wealth of information. I'm totally fangirling now. I promise not to slide into your DMs too much. Anytime Please, you want. <laughs> Uh, Brian Kelly, who is the godfather of points and soon to be father of a little baby boy. Congratulations again. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to my mom's show. Don't forget to subscribe.